Okay, something so crazy just happened in crypto that I had to get out of my hibernation. I mean, just looking at this will probably make you want to start a fight with, I don't know, hopefully somebody smaller. And it makes you realize that that's what they always do, huh? They pick on the weak. And if you're wondering who exactly am I talking about, I'm talking about an entity that does not do anything for the purpose it was set out for. No, they do everything to prey on the weak. Uh, prey on anybody, I guess. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about... Oh, wrong picture. <laughs> can, can happen to the best of us, right? Of course, I'm talking about the SEC, with specifically Gary Gensler at its head. Well, Zero Hedge just posted this. Gross abuse of power. Two SEC lawyers resign after the judge's uh, rebuke in the anti-crypto case. So something just happened. Something was just proven. And I think it's pretty juicy. So once more, two SEC lawyers are pushed out after the agency was censor or censored a crypto case. The judge sanctioned the regulator for gross abuse of power in March, which was uh, a while back. But how has Gary Gensler not resigned yet? Like, a while back, I saw so many posts of Gary Gensler leaving, but I, I don't know. And what we've done, what he's posted, I'll, I'll cover in just a second. It's, it's down here. But Gronk, says, two Securities and Exchange Commission lawyers, Michael Welsh and Joseph Watkins, resigned after a federal judge sanctioned the SEC for gross abuse of power in a crypto case related to the Utah-based crypto company Debtbox. Now, when this case, I think, was first brought up, I'm not so sure if we did the first day or something like that, but somewhere throughout we covered it, said, hey, this is kind of crazy. And the judge later on said, hmm, SEC, you really couldn't have actually gone after them because that's basically a complete abuse of your power. Hour, you know, whatever you're saying here, it doesn't really make sense. You weren't able to go after them like that. The case was marred by false statements and misrepresentations, and they knew, uh, as well as lack of evidence. And the judge took the extreme step of sanctioning the SEC, like everybody's been wanting for a long, long, long time, and ordered the agency to pay some of that box's attorney fees. I don't know why it's some. Like, to an extent, I'm thinking, hey, it's tax dollars. On the opposite side, I'm thinking, man, you screw them over hard. Like, wh why is it even a question about whether or not they should be paying their fee? It's like, like a lot of the law system is kind of stupid in that regard, right? You're just chilling about doing nothing in some instances. Somebody's like, huh, Shama, you're doing something wrong. I'm coming after you. And all of a sudden you have a crazy massive bill. It's like, I was just chilling, doing nothing. And now I have to pay all this money. I'm thinking of the ripple case, right? Then again, there are many instances where you can get some of the fees back, if not all the fees back. But then again, you still have to cuff it up at some point to, to fight this battle. The incident is a significant development in the crypto industry's ongoing battle with regulatory, uh, regulatory bodies. And a comment there is interesting. But they were just doing what Gensler told them to, he should resign. And there comes an interesting point, which I don't have a perfect answer to, but that is how much of all this is Gary Gensler's fault and how much should he just get the freak out? And I think a lot of people thought a few days ago, like, um, how much is it now? Let's see. Let me see. It's now the, what date is it now? 22, 23? Oh, 23rd. Uh, it's a Dubai time, right? So I'm going to say 22nd for most people watching this. He posted this like five days ago. He said, hey. It's been an honor to serve as SEC chair, which made me really think he's going to get the freak out. It's going to be over, but you'll see. Over the past three years, I've seen firsthand how incredible the staff at the SEC serve investors and issuers alike, which, again, the majority of people will not agree with, which is interesting to me when he's a public servant like this. Why don't people look at like public opinion in that sense? It's not like it's really polarizing. I know with some people, you can really say like, hmm, but about, you know, 50, let's say between 40 and 60% support him. So even though a lot of people hate him, there's a lot of people that love him too. Show me more than six people, you know, outside of Gary Gensler's family that really think he's doing a good job. It's hard to find. Well, I guess depending on the sector you're in, if you hate crypto to the fullest degree and don't care about ethics, you know, you're a dark individual, you might think Gary Gensler's like Superman and his word is like, you know, you're, you're your book of choice, I guess. But anyway, Gary Gensler said, we filed more than 2,000 enforcement actions. All right. And the SEC's enforcement actions have resulted in orders for more than $6 billion in civil penalties and more than $6 billion in disgorgement. So again, looking at these numbers, it makes, it makes a lot of sense for the SEC to go so heavy against Ripple, um, just a side note, because of the amount of money they would bring in and how good that would look for the balance sheets and for the career. Again, Gary Gensler is not a money man in the sense that he needs more. I've told you this many times. He is a very extremely wealthy man. This is probably an end of time, meaning, you know, you're whatever. How old is he? 65? Pick a, pick a number right there. 67, 75, 
80. I don't know, I'm gonna guess he's like 67 or something like that, like just about to retire normally, and just wants to go full on, put up a legacy, put up a career, and be that man. You know, the level where a lot of people have got some good money and they wanna get into politics. They wanna start being somebody. And so the credits here, you know, the, oh, I, I got seven, bi <laughs> seven, bi it matters, it matters a lot. We've been working on making our markets more efficient, competitive, transparent, and resilient. We have finalized 38 rules on treasury clearing, corporate governance, and money market funds, to name a few. Interestingly how he does not put up crypto, right? Because first of all, they say there's no rules to be made because it's already clear. And second of all, they say nothing to the likes of Coinbase, etc., about making rules because they don't want to, uh, and Ripple case alike. Gary says, and we're not done. And that's where kind of things get scary. On our agenda, further equity market structure rules and additional cybersecurity rules, among others. But that basically means Gary Gensler is uh, it's going nowhere. <laughs> you would have thought he'd seen the light by now. But no, it wasn't a resignation. <laughs> and a little side note. If you look back at the case at hand here, by the way, it does become quite clear quite quickly that it was a, a bit of a shit show, you know? It was a bit of a crazy situation, and I, I don't think the judge could have done much except for kind of, you know, pat the SEC on the on the left nut here a little bit, on the, on the face, on the eye, you know, give them a little annoying poke right there, because otherwise, people really wouldn't keep it together, I think. You can only do so much without people getting fully angry. You know, just take a look. U U.S. judge criticized the SEC for gross abuse of power. <laughs> and again, we've already covered this many times, but they acted in bad faith and were deliberately perp perpetuating falsehoods, this is what the judge said, in efforts to obtain an, uh, an asset freeze and a temporary restraining order against the company. Which, again, in my opinion, those things are not bad if you are certain that what you're doing here is helping the majority of the US or whatever investors. You know, in my opinion, right, and this can be taken a lot of ways, but my opinion is always, if you really know they're fraudsters and they're gonna hurt a lot of people, you know, Sam Bankman free type of people, and you have to get a little lie in there to take their assets down. No, I can't say I mind. I don't think anybody minds because you're right in the end. But <laughs> if you're going after somebody, theoretically speaking, that might be a little bit innocent or, you know, the false has already been done or I mean, things get a little bit iffy-wiffy and now you're just lying for your career, lying for, I don't know exactly what, I don't know about that. Isn't as honorful as uh, as the prior or the former, you know? Let me say that by, by, by adding, I have no idea if that box actually did like some real garbage stuff. Honest truth, I don't know, don't really care. Ultimately though, I haven't heard a single person around me ever say, oh, <laughs> I'm so sad, nobody grabbed dead box before. But I heard a lot of people say, damn, I wish FTX was stopped earlier. I wish this or that company was stopped earlier. So basically they're just grabbing the wrong one. There could have been a lot of good stories where if they just put up a little lie to get some evidence, well, might have still turned against them, but they would have been seen as heroes. In this case though, <laughs> no. <laughs> Regardless of whether or not they were right. But once more, that's like, a non-official opinion. My, what I'm saying here is not the best following the law, it's what I think is most ethical because it saves the majority of the people. Then again, can't say I would do the same with the SEC shoes because uh, I'd probably be a little bit afraid to go against the grain. I don't like this uh, little label of gross abuse of power. So I definitely would stick with the rules in this case. But I guess they also did that when it came to Sam Beckman Freed because they didn't do anything against him. Side note, when you try to look up the litigation on the SEC's website, it's gone. I try to find it here, uh, the litigation release. It's literally in the Reuters article. You know, this right here, the regulator suing dead box, nowhere to be found. Reading it a little bit further, actually, because I have to refresh a lot of my memory. We kind of skip a couple of the words I just stated when it comes to the SEC kind of being, you know, being able to be seen through the fingers. No, they literally <laughs> went to court and lied the way it seems right here. The commission's above discussed con it constitutes a gross abuse of power and trust to it by Congress and substantially undermined the integrity of these proceedings and the judicial process. The operation of the American judicial system rests on these fundamental proposition that every party who comes before the court is bound by and adheres to the same set of rules. I know, anyway, I could keep talking about this for like 10 more hours because it's so interesting. And I almost wanna just go on a, on a rampage for a good little while talking about the ethics of SEC because we've done that for a couple years now, especially in the Ripple case. I don't think it's necessary though. Let me know what you think down below. Should Gary Gensler also get kicked out? Do you think this will change anything or do you think one crook out, another crook in? It's hard, man. I mean, regulators, they never are really funny. 
And I guess at the end of the day, you can never do everything right, which is why it's always kind of a funny system. <laughs> but some might say you can never get worse than Gary Gensler. Some might say he's just the crux to an ever larger story. Because at the end of the day, like I just said, him gone, would that make things better or just way worse? Perhaps, right? And I'm just stating this for in case. Perhaps what he's doing, I don't want to offend anybody with this, but it's just worth thinking about. Perhaps what he's doing is actually one of the best ways to get crypto to where we want it to be. Might sound crazy, but what if his, in our opinion, stupidest way ever, right? Because I'm thinking he used to be really much into crypto. He knows a lot about crypto. What if his kind of stupid, we all think, what the, what's wrong with you, boy? What if his way is because he knows the system, he has to act a fool to get the best result out? I don't think so. Don't think so. But I'm just saying, what if we are being played by a mastermind 300 IQ, you know, guy right there? What if, huh? What if the tables turn? I don't know. <laughs> that was it though. See you guys later.